Ever find your ferret gazing out across the garden and wonder what they see? Well, in this video we run through the basic anatomy of a ferret's eye, what a ferret sees, and why a ferret has, in fact, perfect vision. Whilst a ferret is a true predator, it is unusual amongst the animal kingdom in that it has horizontal oval pupils. Horizontal pupils are typically found on prey animals. It is thought the horizontal pupils on a ferret may help them track scurrying prey. For the most part, however, the dark coloured iris means that a ferret eye appears almost fully black. Again untypical for a predator, the ferret has eyes partially set on the side of its head. This means that the eye angles 32 degrees off the forward line. This angled eye provides the ferret with a huge 270 degree field of vision. This is far greater than the 180 degrees of humans. However, as with humans, this doesn't mean that the ferret can accurately see the whole 270 degrees at once. Instead, their full detailed vision is restricted to a very small area in front, approximately 5 degrees off the midline each side. All other vision is periphery vision, which provides the animal with the ability to detect movement, but they would need to turn their heads to see the detail of what caused that movement. A disadvantage of eyes set on the side of the head is that the common area visible by both eyes is reduced. In Ferret's case, it is only 40 degrees. This is called the binocularity and is the area in which the ferret can see in 3D and has depth perception. For humans, this binocularity is 120 degrees rather than 40. Finally, for a ferret, the combination of side-set eyes and a long nose results in a blind spot just in front of their face. However, it's unlikely to be noticeable for the ferret, as at that range, their superior senses of touch and smell will be the overriding input. In the human world, perfect sight is known as 2020 vision. A ferret, however, has only 2170 vision. This means that the detail it sees of an object 20 feet away is the same as the detail a human would see of that object 170 feet away. For example, this is the length of an Olympic swimming pool or an American football field. These photos show how a distant object will appear blurred, with the level of blurring reducing as the object gets closer. By around 6 to 8 feet, the object should be clear to a ferret. In essence, a ferret is short-sighted, so close objects are in focus, but far objects are not. When light shines in the eyes, it is received and sent to the brain via receptors on the retina. The more receptors, the richer the detail of the image given to the brain. There are two types of receptors, the cones, which transmit colour, and the rods, which transmit low-light information to the brain. Cones are further divided into those which sense the red end of the light spectrum, those sensing the yellow-green middle ground, and those sensing the blue or purple end of this spectrum. Whilst humans have all three types of cones, ferrets only have the red and blue cones. This means that ferrets can only see in red and blue colours. All other colours, like yellows and greens, will appear to a ferret as grey. As ferrets have 14 times more red cones than blue, the red tones in colours will be more pronounced in their vision. Interestingly, some studies suggest that ferrets' blue cone receptors are capable of detecting UV light to some extent. This is thought to contribute to, and enhance, their low light vision. We've covered the way that ferrets see and focus in daylight, but as ferrets are primarily active in twilight hours of dusk and dawn, they have developed exceptional low light vision. The rod receptors are responsible for low light, and the density of rods in the ferret's eye is over double that of a human. This results in a ferret needing seven times less light to see in the dark than humans. Perfect for spotting prey hiding in the moonlight shadows. We can't discuss ferret eyes without mentioning the albino. An albino has a complete absence of pigment in the eye, rendering it pink in colour. But it's not just colour that differentiates the albino eye. Studies have shown that an albino has a materially worse visual acuity, meaning that objects are blurry much closer than in a pigmented ferret. 
Not only is an albino more short-sighted than a pigmented variant, but it also has poorer peripheral vision, poorer low-light vision, and poorer visual cortex development, meaning the albino has significantly poorer motion sensing and poorer depth perception than a pigmented ferret. So at the start of the video, I said that ferrets have perfect vision, yet the rest of the video seems to highlight poor color reception and short-sightedness amongst other deficiencies. So what gives? Well, the answer, of course, is that ferrets' eyesight is perfect for them. What use is being able to see 100 meters away to a ferret? Or what use is rich color detail when a ferret hunts in low light twilight? We tend to think of vision being good by comparing it to what we see and how our brains analyze and interpret this data. But ferrets don't need or use the visual data in the same way that we do. To that extent, human vision would probably be quite bad for a ferret. The ferret's visual cortex in the brain is geared towards motion sensitivity rather than static object identification. And in any event, the ferret's other senses of smell, hearing and touch perform a far greater role in how a ferret experiences its environment than it does for a human. This is further evidenced by observing blind ferrets going about their business with a surprising efficiency and manage long, active, rich lives despite the absence of sight. Thanks for watching. If you did like the video, please like and subscribe and try out some of our other videos.